Hello, and welcome to The Product Rule. My name is Tuesday J. Johnson. I'm a lecturer at the University of Texas El Paso and an assistant professor with Doña Ana Community College. This particular lecture is for Calculus, Math 1411 at UTEP. Chapter 2, Differentiation, goes with Larson's 11th edition of Calculus Text. And I've separated section 2.3 into three different lectures. This is about product and quotient rules and higher order derivatives. And we're going to talk specifically about the product rule in this part. So what is the product rule? The product of two differentiable functions, u and v, is itself differentiable. Right, so a product is differentiable. That's nice. Moreover, the derivative of u times v is the first function multiplied by the derivative of the second, plus the second function multiplied by the derivative of the first. And we can see in our formula, the derivative of a product, it's not the product of the derivatives. All right, so we leave u of x alone and multiply it by the derivative of v, derivative of the second, add to that the second function, v of x, and multiply by the derivative of the first. So we're gonna leave one alone and find one derivative each time we're doing a product rule. So in this case, we're multiplying two things. We'll have two terms that we need to add. First times the derivative of the second plus second times the derivative of the first. I'll be repeating that often, so get used to it. So let's use the product rule to find the derivative of f of x equals 6x plus 5 times x cubed minus 2. When I look at this, my first, my u of x is going to be 6x plus 5. And my v of x, my second function, is going to be x cubed minus 2. Find the derivatives. I know the derivative of u of x is just 6. The derivative of v of x is 3x squared using our derivative rules. So the product rule says the derivative of f is first 6x plus 5 times the derivative of the second 3x squared plus second left alone the original x cubed minus 2 times the derivative of the first. So the derivative of u is 6. Now, this is a fine answer, but get used to simplifying. This is the only step that involves calculus. Now we're going to distribute 6x times 3x squared to get 18x cubed, 5 times 3x squared to get 15x squared, x cubed times 6 to get 6x cubed, and minus 2 times 6 to get a negative 12. And when we combine like terms, the 18 and the 6 give us 24x cubed, 15x squared minus 12. Why does that matter? Suppose we didn't use the product rule and we just wanted to find the, der the derivative. We might just FOIL this, right? 6x times x cubed is 6x to the fourth. 6x times a negative 2 is a negative 12x. 5 times x cubed is 5x cubed. And 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. With a polynomial, we could take the derivative. The derivative of 6x to the fourth is 24x cubed. I skipped one. I rewrote the order here. 5x cubed, uh, the derivative is 15x squared. The derivative of minus 12x is a negative 12. And the derivative of negative 10 is going to be a 0. So basically, we have a choice. We can multiply to start and then take the derivative. Or we could take the little derivatives, as we did in the previous slide, and multiply at the end. But you're not going to get out of the algebra either way. One step of calculus, but mostly algebra. So let's use the product rule to find the derivative of g of x equals the square root of x times sine of x. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite it. Instead of a radical, I'm going to use rational exponents, x to the 1 half times sine of x. I'm going to identify my first, x to the 1 half is u of x and its derivative is 1 half x to the negative 1 half. My second function, my v of x is sine of x, and its derivative is cosine of x. Putting these toge together, the product rule is first, x to the 1 half, derivative of the second, cosine of x, plus second, as original, times the derivative of the first, 1 half x to the negative 1 half. I'm going to rewrite x to the 1 half as the square root of x times cosine of x. Over here, the 2 is in the denominator, the 1 half, the x to the negative 1 half, the negative sign says go to the denominator. The 1 half power is the square root, so I'll have sine of x over 2 square root of x. Started with a radical, I finish it with a radical just to take it back to where it was. x to the negative 2 plus 1 over x, all times the cube root of x minus cosine of x. 
I'm going to rewrite x to the negative 2 is fantastic, but 1 over x, I'm going to call that x to the negative 1. So that way I can use my uh, derivative rules. The cube root of x, that's a rational exponent of x to the 1 third minus cosine of x. I identify, identify my first, x to the negative 2 plus x to the negative 1, and find the appropriate derivative. I identify my second, x to the 1 third minus cosine of x, and find the appropriate derivatives. Remember, the derivative of cosine is a negative sign, so when I'm subtracting cosine, my derivative is subtract a negative sign, which turns into addition. Product rule would have been nice to have this on one line, sorry about that, but the derivative of h is first, times the derivative of the second, plus the second, times the derivative of the first. And you'll notice I didn't multiply out examples two or three, like I did example one. If we're just finding derivatives, sometimes it's all right just to walk away, just do the operation and walk away. But if we ever need to use the derivative for something, we always should simplify first. So that's my general rule. If, it, uh, if it's useful, simplify. If we're just doing it to polish our skills, don't worry about it. Find the derivative and, and be done. All right. Now, our y is x squared plus 3x all times, 2x minus 1 all times, x to the fifth, fifth minus sine of x. We're still going to use the product rule. The product rule can be generalized so that you take all the originals and multiply by only one derivative each time. So I'm going to leave the first two alone and take the derivative of the third. And then I'm going to leave the first and, set and third alone and take the derivative of the second. And then I'm going to leave the second two alone and take the derivative of the first. So each time I'm only taking the derivative of one part, leaving two parts the same. Let's check it out. So I'll start with x squared plus 3x times 2x minus 1 and take the derivative of x to the fifth minus sine of x, which is 5x to the fourth minus cosine of x. Three terms here, so I'm going to have a three terms in my derivative, three things that I'm adding together. I'm going to add, leave the first parentheses alone, x squared plus 3x, find the derivative of the middle set of parentheses, and leave the third set of parentheses alone, x to the fifth minus sine x. To that we add, now I'm going to take the derivative of the first set of parentheses, my first function, and leave the last two alone. The same result could be found using a nested product rule, using your last two factors as v of x. Here's our v of x and our u of x. But that can get kind of nasty kind of quick. Leaving two alone, finding the derivative of the odd man out each time, I think is a, a much sleeker way of doing this. A lot less parentheses, a lot less simplification later on. So that's the end of the product rule, kind of. Part three of this lecture is going to have examples that have the product and quotient rules put together. Make sure you watch your quotient rule first.